What's up, everybody? It's George Gabriel, and I'm going to streamline your audio editing with Strip Silence. When we're recording audio, we don't always need to actually hear every part of the audio. In fact, there's lots of times where we have a guitar part or a drum part or whatever that we don't want the silence to be around. In fact, it just adds to the noise of our mix. There's a relatively hidden thing in the audio editing of Logic that allows you to quickly and effectively strip out all silent parts in that audio. And you might not be aware of it, but I'm gonna show it to you now. Let's take a look. So I have this drum part up in Logic and basically one of the things that you deal with when you're actually dealing with drums, but there's a lot of bleed. So here's the drum part kind of soloed out and you can hear there's a significant bleed. You can kind of hear the bass in the background. You can kind of hear the guitar. This is a live performance. And really what I'm trying to do is get the best possible drum sound. Although I've already applied a lot of effects to drums and got some of the bad sounds out of it, I just want to take off the, the effects that are compressing it and whatnot and just get to kind of the core sounds of the drums. So first I'm going to start with a kick here and I'm going to take a look at what do I hear on this kick alone. And so I'm just going to sold this kick track out and you can already see the bleed. Bleed basically is you have a live mic and a kick drum and you have a live performance with other players in the room. Plus you have the other drums and what's happening is that microphone, even though it's in the kick drum, it's picking up the other instruments and sometimes you don't want that. Maybe you want to isolate that kick and just get a better sound for it. So let's Let's take a listen and hear what this kick sounds like. So you could definitely hear the snare there. You can hear a little bit of the bass. So what I'm trying to do is I just want to isolate the kick. Now, one way if I was really glutton for punishment, I could go in and I could take every single one of these kicks and Make sure I don't get the snare there and I can sit and manually edit all of these things and take a whole lot of time doing that and then just delete the rest of the things out of there. But that is not very efficient. That would take a lot of time. And what is efficient is something called remove silence. It used to be called strip silence and now it's called remove silence. And there's a key command. I'm going to open up my key commands and I'm just going to type in the word silence. So depending on how your settings are, there's silence, there's there's insert silence between, and then there's remove silence from audio region. In other words, called strip silence. So this is what we're looking for here. Remove silence from audio region. And right now it looks like uh, that key command is control X for me. Yet you could make it whatever you want it to be. There is a host of menus where you can actually find this and split remove sounds from audio region, but you might not be that familiar with it because if you right click it and go split, well, I don't want to split this. Really, this is kind of a hidden command. So to activate this command, you want to first select the entire region. And this is all these kicks, right? So I'm going to select this entire region and I'm going to activate that command. I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see it. And you will notice that there are four factors in this strip silence command. The first is the threshold and you'll see it's at minus 28 dB, which means that if it hits minus 28 dB, it opens the threshold to allow that sound pass through. It's kind of like a gate, but it's important to note that this doesn't necessarily equate to your decibel reading on the track. In other words, if I took all the plugins out, I had my fader at unity and I saw, well, I don't want this sound and that that's at minus 10 and I do want the sound and it's at minus six, it doesn't equate that way. This is a little bit of a trial and error, but once you actually figure out the threshold that works, it will vastly cut your audio editing time. Again, threshold decides at what point are you allowing a sound to pass through. Minimum time to accept silence is important. So what it's going to do is actually say, okay, the gate is open. I'll allow this audio to be there. But once the gate closes, how quickly do you want me to stop making a new region? And for a kick drum, it might be, point one but this is things you have to experiment with pre-attack time is hey before i allow this audio file to show up how much pre space do you want now you would say six thousandth of a second would be fine but when you actually look at that you might find that you want to adjust it a little bit further and the post release time is once that gate closes once that threshold closes how much of that audio do you want to continue as a region it's kind of hard to explain but let me show you by just looking at 
these settings alone. Now, my goal here is to get the kicks separated so I can have a little bit more control on them. So let me click OK, just with the default settings here, and then zoom in to this and see what I have here. So let's hear. Not bad. So I'm pretty happy with that, except for that snare. So there's one way you could do it is you could go in and edit out the things that you don't want, but you can go back in, reset your threshold and say, you know what, let's make the threshold a little bit less here. I don't want those snares in there and then see what happens. So now you can see it didn't take the snare. Okay, so this is pretty good. Now, if I really want to be picky, I can zoom way into this, and this is where you're going to see that pre-roll. So you're going to go, hey, wait a minute here. Now, mind you, this is like such a nominal area of seconds that you're like, well, I want it to be tighter. Okay, let's make it tighter. So let me undo that, bring it back in, and instead of six thousandths of a second, let's go to three thousandths of a second and see if that makes it tighter. And let's zoom into this. Yeah, that's tighter. Honestly, you're not going to be able to hear this. It's like, you know, nothing of, of a sample. But you got to be careful with that setting because you could end up upcutting some of your stuff here. So let's see what happens here. That's not upcut, but you might find one that is upcut. So you don't want it to not include the audio. And like I said, it's pretty, uh, three seems to work. This is pretty tight, but let's look at this. Nope, that's good. One other setting that you want to take a look at is search zero crossing. You want to have that selected. What this does is when it's going to make a region out of those parameters, what it's going to do is make sure that the audio is at zero on the decibel level. In other words, it's not going to upcut it. If you had this off, you could have bad results. So another thing that it does is you might find out in some areas like this. Hmm, that's just quick double bass. I can just roll this back and edit it. and not have a problem there. So you might have to tweak it, but I'll tell you, it's a lot faster to use the strip silence command than to actually have to edit all those. In the case of toms, you can see clearly where the toms come in. Now this might be a little bit easier to just go and edit those toms out, but I don't want all this noise in between. I don't want all this tom mic bleed. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just select this region. Again, strip silence. Now the settings are gonna be a little bit different. Why? Because the tom has got a longer decay. Therefore, I don't really want it to just cut off that quickly. So minimum time to accept a silence, I'm going to keep that what it is. And pre-attack time, I'm going to keep that what it is. But then the release time, I'm going to make longer. And what this does is it allows me to actually have a little bit more of a tom area. Now you can see that sometimes there's some flammy things in here. And really, if you keep on adjusting the threshold, you can see if I take the threshold way down, none of the toms are getting picked up. But you can clearly see the toms on this. And so you mess with the threshold and it'll give you the results that you need. So I'll keep on going up until I see all the toms included. Right now, it looks like all my toms are included, all the rest of the noise. Yeah, maybe that's a tom, I don't know. So you can always check that out and go, is this a tom or is this not a tom? And so now if I go into this, well, let's see. Let me solo this and see. Now, you can clearly hear cymbals and all this, and this is a double hit, so what I would do in this, I would back this one up a little bit. But really what I like to do in these is I like to build in these fades here. So I can just take my fade tool out and go ahead. And I might even go a little bit tighter than this. Let's see, let's take this out a little bit. That's more like it. Now, there's a quick way to do fades on all of these. In fact, let's go back to the kick because that's going to be more of where I want the audio out to be correct. So if I just want to apply mass fades on these, I can... Because I want it to make sure it fades out nicely. So I'll just select all of these. I'm just going to use these kicks for starters. And I'm going to go to my inspector area under more and go to fade out. And let's say I'm going to say I want a 200 millisecond fade out. And I can zoom into this and see what that looks like. Maybe that's too much. Let's go 100. You can even go 50. 
Again, this is going to be a trial and error thing. I think I'd stick with 100 on that. Maybe 75, split the difference. And now I have just successfully isolated my kick. Kind of like a gate, but a little bit more control. Now you could do the same with your snares. You could do the same with any of these. And it doesn't just happen on drums. This works on other instruments as well. If I want to use this on a bass that seems to have some start and stop points, I can go ahead, select that bass region and kind of alter these settings until I get what I want. See this, I might accept the minimum time of silence to be higher because I just want these individual regions to go. And I might want to have my release time a little bit longer. I don't know. You get to mess with it. The only unfortunate thing about this is you can't zoom into this and actually see. This is kind of in need of a update where you can actually do a little bit more with this. That said, now you can see I have nicely edited the holes of my bass part. <laughs> All right, so basically what I have there is a nicely edited thing where I'm not getting any bleed or anything like that. And if I really want to, I can tighten this up. But the bottom line is, is I do find this to be a lot quicker. Now this works great with vocals. This works great with uh, guitars, especially when you have different parts. What it does is it streamlines your editing process and it allows you to get all the noise out of your recording pretty quickly without having to physically edit everything in this. Hopefully you see this tool for what it is, a very quick and streamlined process to strip out the silence of your audio regions and make your mixes cleaner. I hope this is a helpful video as far as getting your audio nice and clean. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon if you want to be notified for future videos. And give me your comments. What do you think about the strip silence? Is this going to save you time? Did you already know about it? Did you not know about it? I want to know. Thanks for coming. Until next time, this is George Gabriel Music.